Hey guys, today we're taking a look at analyzing the solutions to quadratic equations. Now, you'll recall from our study earlier on that solutions to a quadratic equation and other equations are known as the roots of the equation. They are the zeros of the function. In other words, they're the x values that make y equal to zero, and that's why they're also known as the x-intercepts of our graph. Now, we're going to use this thing called the discriminant, which you're kind of already familiar with. It is b squared minus 4ac where a, b, and c all come from the coefficients in our quadratic equation. And this is going to be used to determine the number of real solutions to the roots. Now, from the quadratic formula, this b squared minus 4ac is the part that's underneath that radical symbol, or the square root. So this is going to tell us whether we have two real solutions, one real solution, or zero real solutions, but two complex conjugate solutions. Here's what it says. It says, there will be two real solutions if your discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is greater than zero. In other words, it's positive. There'll be a positive number underneath that square root, and therefore you'll be able to take that square root and come up with two real solutions. Now, there'll be one real solution if your discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is equal to zero. And finally, there'll be two complex conjugate solutions if your discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is less than zero. In other words, there'll be a negative number, and that would lead us to uh, taking a square root of a negative, which would result in a complex number or complex solution. All right, graphically, here's what this all looks like. If our parabola crosses the x-axis in two distinct points, there's going to be two real solutions, and we can conclude that our discriminant must be greater than zero. There'll be one real solution if our parabola touches the x-axis in one point and then bounces either back up or back down depending on whether our parabola opened up or down. And finally, graphically, our parabola will not cross the x-axis if there are zero real solutions or two complex conjugate solutions. All right, let's take a look at a few examples. Example one says to determine the nature of the roots using the determinant. I should say discriminant, shouldn't it? I think that's supposed to say discriminant. Then solve the equation using the quadratic formula. All right, well, remember our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We got 3 squared minus 4 times 3 times 8, and that gives us 9 minus 96 which is negative 87. Now that's definitely less than zero. Therefore, we say that there are no real solutions. There are two complex conjugate solutions though. All right, now let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula to find those complex conjugate solutions. So the opposite of b is negative three plus or minus. Now the square root of b squared minus four ac, we've already done that and that resulted in negative 87. All divided by two times a, which was three. All right, so we're going to simplify this a little further. We have negative three plus or minus. Now I'm gonna pull out the square root of the negative one and call that i, root 87, all divided by six. So here's our two complex conjugate solutions. If we want, we can further simplify those we're gonna have negative one-half plus i root 87 all over six, and we'll have negative one-half minus i root 87 all over six. So there you have it, those are complex conjugates, and those are the solutions to this quadratic equation. All right, example two says to determine how many uh, if any, solutions exist for the quadratic here. Uh, and then use your quad form to solve for the roots. Okay, so let's start off by determining what our discriminant is here. We have b squared minus 4ac. So that's uh, 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 15 times c, which is negative 1. Now this comes out to be 4 minus a negative, which would be plus 60. And so that results in 64. Now this is a positive number, and it's actually a perfect square. So this uh, is going to mean that there are gonna be two real solutions, and those real solutions will be rational numbers. Solutions, there we go. 
And you can go ahead and use your quad form on your graphing calculator to find that. Otherwise, I'm going to do that here using the quadratic formula. So the opposite of b is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 64, all divided by 2 times a, which is 30. So that's negative 2 plus or minus 8 all over 30, which results in negative 2 plus 8 over 30 and negative 2 minus 8 over 30. 30. All right, so that gives us 6 thirtieths, with the, which is 1 fifth, and this gives us negative 10 thirtieths, which is negative 1 third. So our two solutions, our two x-intercepts for this quadratic equation here are both 1 fifth and negative 1 third. All right, in our next example here, we see a ball is thrown from a height of 5 feet with a velocity of 40 feet per second. Will this ball ever reach 50 feet? Why or why not? So we can actually use uh, our quadratic formula here to help us out. Let's write this equation. First of all, we see that we have this equation of free fall uh, and it's in terms of feet. So our quadratic equation would read negative 16 x squared. Our initial velocity is 40 x and it's thrown from a height of five feet. And we wanna know, will this ever reach 50? So here we have uh, set this equal to 50 feet high. And remember, we want to get this set equal to zero so that we can use our quadratic formula. So we're going to move that 50 over by subtraction. So that will now read as negative 45. Okay, so we have our A, B, and C values here. Let's just start by evaluating the discriminant. B squared is 40 squared minus four times a, which is negative 16, times c, which is negative 45. Now, when I uh, evaluate this, I'm actually going to get 1,600 minus 2,800. And this comes out to be a negative uh, 1,200. And I recognize that because it's negative, there are actually gonna be no real solutions. And because there's no real solutions, I can conclude that there are no x values, in other words, no time values, at which this ball will reach a height of 50 feet. So I can say, no, this ball will never reach a height of 50 feet. Uh, and explaining why is because there's gonna be no real solutions to this discriminant, to this quadratic equation. All right, one more example here. Let's take a look at example four. We see that we have a height, or the equation h equals negative 0.4x squared plus 2x plus 2 models the path of a ball where x is the horizontal distance in feet, the ball's traveled, uh, and h is the height above the ground. Does the ball ever reach a height of four feet? So we're gonna do something very, very similar to what we did in the previous problem. We have negative 0.4x squared plus 2x plus two, and we wanna know, will this height ever be equal to four? So in order to use our quadratic formula, we need to set this equal to zero. So we're gonna move that four over by subtraction. Now it's set equal to zero, and I have my values for A, B, and C. So I can evaluate our discriminant here, and the discriminant will tell me whether uh, there are gonna be any real solutions to this quadratic equation. So, and if there are real solutions, then we'll go ahead and find those either using our graphing calculator and our program for quad form, or uh, by using the quadratic formula. So let's evaluate. We have two squared minus four times negative 0.4 times negative two. All right, so that gives us four, and that comes out to be uh, minus whatever this turns into. Uh, but as a result, you're gonna get a positive 0.8. Now, because it's positive, we say that there are two real solutions, and therefore, we're going to go find those two real solutions to this quadratic equation and those solutions will be uh, the time at which this ball reaches four feet in its uh, path of flight.